There are things on your website that are sabotaging your organic traffic, SEO and sales. No matter how much time you spend optimizing your content and building backlinks, these things will drag it down. Hi everyone, I'm Maggie, founder of Rock Paper Copy, number one place for Shopify store owners who want to skyrocket their sales and SEO. In this video, I will tell you about 11 things to remove from your website immediately if you want to boost your sales and organic traffic from Google. And if you like what you hear, remember to click the like button below and subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular SEO tips and tricks. Now let's get started. Number one, outdated content. This relates to all the blog posts and pages with content that is no longer valid. It could be blog posts that contain a date in the title. For example, best marketing strategies for 2018. As we are in 2020, this is considered outdated information. Another example could be a blog post where you talk about your collection that arrived two years ago. So this blog post was created two years ago, but it contains links pointing to the collection that is no longer being sold. That is not helpful in Google's eyes and can actually affect negatively your SEO. It can also affect your sales because people will be put off by seeing a lot of back, a lot of broken links and by seeing that these products are no longer on sale. The solution is to update old content with the new information. It means checking your older blog posts and all the pages to see if all the backlinks are working, either internal or external, reading through the content to see if in all in the information is up to date. If you see that anything needs updating, you can alter the text. You can change the information, you can change the dates, you can change the collections or other products that, that you talk about in this particular blog post. What I also like to do is adding fresh content, so adding a short paragraph to each old blog post to update it. What not many people know, that adding a longer paragraph to all the blog posts will trigger Google bots to index that piece of content again. If you only updated a title and a short paragraph, it won't trigger Google's attention. However, if you altered a bigger chunk of the article, if you added a longer paragraph, at least a hundred words, it will let Google know that this is a fresh content that needs to be indexed again. It will send the bots to read the article again and it will start ranking in the search results. Don't forget that Google wants to show the most recent results in the searches. So if your blog, blog post was published two years ago but hasn't been updated since then, it won't be likely to be displayed at the top of search results. Unless you update it regularly, like all the major bloggers do, so it contains the fresh content and fresh information from Google's perspective. So remember to go through all of the old content regularly. I recommend doing it every six months. Check for the backlinks, check for the missing images, and for any outdated information. And add a short paragraph to make it more relevant, to make it more current, and to boost the Google indexing. Number two, shipping calculates at the checkout. This is my personal peeve and this is something I see on a continuous basis when I review Shopify stores. Shipping calculates at the checkout is a default Shopify feature that comes displayed on the product page. Even if you offer a flat rate shipping, this information will be still displayed on your product page. It can be very confusing to your visitors and can definitely affect sales. What I often see is stores informing about a free shipping in the top promo bar and then displaying shipping calculated at the checkout information on the product page. When your visitors see it, they don't know if they will be charged the shipping at the last stage of the checkout or if the shipping is actually free. Remember, nobody likes bad surprises at the checkout. Especially that the shipping fees are such a sensitive subject. Many shoppers don't mind paying 5 or $6 dollars more for the product, however paying extra $3 dollars for the delivery is often a deal breaker. So if you're offering flat rate shipping or a free delivery worldwide, remember to remove the shipping calculated at the checkout from the product page. I explain how to do it in the other video and I'll link to it from the description Below. Number three, default Shopify refund policy. When you open a Shopify store, you often get a choice to use their own refund policy. It can be found in a policy section and it's very, very easy to add it to your store. It saves you writing your own policy, which is 
perfect for brand new stores. However, you might not realize that it contains information very, very confusing to your visitors and can also affect sales. It mentions items you might not be selling, such as food, flowers, newspapers, books, DVDs, VHS tapes, video games, downloadable products and personal care items. Also, if you're selling personalized items like engraved products, you need your own unique policy. A policy that specifies whether you actually accept returns for any personalized items and also information how to return the product. If you are dropshipping, you need to follow the agreement with your supplier. Customers cannot return the products to your address because they were shipped by the supplier. All this information needs to be agreed beforehand and it needs to be included in the refund policy. Having a unique refund policy written for your own niche will help you protect your business and will help you protect against any negative feedback against any unhappy customers. Many people will assume that they can return any item even if it was used or washed within 30 days and expect full refund. So unless you specify it in detail on your refund policy, people might assume that you offer full refund for any item returned to you. You can have your refund policy written by a copywriter specializing in e-commerce laws. You can find freelancer like that on Upwork or Fiverr. As you can see, I went to fiverr.com and searched for write store policy. There's plenty of gigs on any budget that you can choose to your needs. You can also find plenty of freelancers on Upwork. Just search for Shopify store policy. Remember that you would need to create an account on Fiverr and Upwork before using their services. It doesn't have to cost a lot. It can cost you between five and ten dollars for a full 500 words refund policy written for your own needs. Just make sure to instruct them what kind of information you want to be included in the policy. There are also plenty of websites helping you to write your own unique policy following the ready-made templates and you only fill out the necessary information. This is often free and will give you professional and sleek policy. You can find template to download on termsfit.com. I will link to it in the video description. Another thing to remember when using Shopify own policy is that you still have the duplicate content, the same content that's on thousands of other Shopify websites. It can negatively affect your SEO because as we all know, Google doesn't like duplicate content. So remember, avoid using Shopify's own default refund policy and write your own content instead. Number four, AliExpress default product titles and descriptions. If you're dropshipping and importing products from AliExpress through Oberlo, the default product descriptions and titles are getting imported as well. However, they contain very confusing information that is not helpful to your buyers. The titles are often too long and the description is just a list of features which is often confusing and not really helpful. What we also don't realize is that the growing number of online shoppers know that they can buy directly from AliExpress. They recognize their own default descriptions and titles, and it's a giveaway sign that you are dropshipping. They might think, why won't I buy directly from AliExpress and save myself some dough? Also, having the same product descriptions as thousands of other Shopify stores meaning that there is nothing that sets you apart from other dropshippers, especially in competitive niche like fashion, watches or beauty products. It's important to stay competitive as much as possible. Unique product descriptions is a great start. Tell about the product benefits, tell about the product features and what kind of problems is it solving. Because people buy based on two emotions, solving problem or avoiding fear. I talk about it in detail in another video and I link to it in the description. So please check it out. When it comes to fashion item, it could be a pain of missing out on being fashionable, on being up to trends, or about solving a problem of not making the positive right impression. Knowing your target audience will help you realize what kind of pains and solutions you are providing. It requires a bit of research in the need, but I have plenty of information on my YouTube channel about doing your customer and niche research, so please check it out. This video is a little bit too short to delve into the topic, but don't ignore a research.
Storytelling is also very, very powerful when writing product descriptions. When you tell a story, it connects with the emotional part of our brain. The same power that is responsible for making decisions. That's why telling a story about your product can help you sell much more. I've got another video on how to use storytelling when writing product descriptions that sell, so make sure to check it out as well. Let's not forget that unique product descriptions and product titles can also help your SEO. Duplicate descriptions can also affect your SEO, as I mentioned with having duplicate policies. So remember to write unique product titles and product descriptions. It will not only help your SEO, it will also help you skyrocket your sales. Number five, blurry images. Blurry images in your promo banners or your product images can definitely affect sales. They can also make your store look very unprofessional. Shopify themes have got default size for all the banners and sliding images. If the image you upload is too small, it will be stretched out by the Shopify theme giving it a blurry effect. Make sure that your images are high quality and high resolution and crop them to the correct sizes as recommended in your theme. If there is no recommended dimension for the image, I recommend cropping the files for your hero images and sliding images to 1500 pixels wide and 1000 pixels high. You can easily do it in Canva. When it comes to product images, the best dimensions are perfect square, at least 800 pixels on all sides. It will ensure that your images are displayed correctly with no blurry effect. Number six, typos and grammar errors. This can happen more often than you think. Having typos happen to everyone, even the grammar checks can miss them. They can give you unprofessional and amateur look, which can affect sales. Remember to check your product descriptions and any written content using a freelancer. You'll find plenty of affordable proofing gigs on Fiverr.com. I recommend doing it before you publish any major content to your website, such as about us page or refund policy, and also proofread your blog post every few months. The investment will quickly pay for itself, as grammar mistakes can put a lot of shoppers off. Especially if English isn't your first language, like in my case, it's quite important. I remember it happened to me at least once that someone emailed me and pointed to me a grammar error on my website. Which was quite embarrassing, especially that it was on a homepage. Since then, I am sending any piece of content to be proofread by a professional freelancer. I also use grammar plugs such as Grammarly and additionally check it using word counter. However, these tools aren't always 100% foolproof. So remember, don't ignore it. Check your content regularly. Number seven, generic info on about us page. This is also a common mistake. Instead of talking about you on about us page, you talk about your mission statement, about the products you're selling and any very generic info. This can also affect sales. People click on about us page to learn more about you and who you are as a person. They want to learn a bit about your story. What inspired you to start this business? What kind of experience you've got in this niche? And who's in the team? Adding a photo of yourself on a Barbara's page is a very important trust signal. Online shoppers are craving this kind of personal connection. So building rapport and trust is crucial for improving sales. People love to see who's behind the brand. It's especially important if you're creating your own products, if you're an artist, or if you're, or if you're selling handmade items. People love to see who they're buying from because this kind of backstory can add value to, to, to the product. So avoid having very generic information on about us page and instead use it to talk about yourself. Talk about when you started this business, what inspired you to launch this business in this particular niche? And also what makes you authority? This is very important for niches such as health, fitness, fashion and more. If people see that you are a fashion conscious and you are selling fashionable items, they will be much more likely to trust your uh, judgment when picking the products. Another example is outdoor equipment store. If people see that you are experienced in camping, in outdoor adventures, they will trust your judgment that you picked the right items to the store. They will trust that the gear they buy from you is recommended by a professional. That's why saying that you are experienced in hiking, in outdoor lifestyle, can also boost sales in this particular niche. 
You don't have to be a pro in the niche that, that you start. However, mentioning any relevant experience can be a plus. So remember, about us page is very important for your conversion rate and it's a crucial trust signal. So make sure to add it to your store. Number eight, content that has no purpose. I see it over and over again, pretty images that are not optimized to convert. They're often not related to your store whatsoever. For example, if you're selling cycling equipment, but have pictures of a garden on a homepage, while well, beautiful, these images don't help to improve your sales. These can be images in a hero banner, in a sliding images, or any images on the homepage. Remember that adding images that are unrelated, it's only taking valuable space from your homepage while not improving sales. Remember that any content going to the homepage needs to have purpose. It needs to work on your conversion, it needs to improve sales. It doesn't have to be a picture of your product, but something that is closely related to your niche. So if you're selling cycling equipment, you can show a photo of someone cycling through the forest and enjoying their day. This kind of image is much more likely to resonate with your target audience and improve your sales. And remember to optimize it with a short tagline and call to action such as shop now, browse more, find out more, link into the relevant content. So remember, if you're adding stock images, think about what kind of purpose it will have and if it's related to your niche. Number nine, partner products and affiliate products. Your Shopify store can be monetized further by using affiliate program or partner program products. However, you often are left with no control over what kind of products are being shown in your store. It means that your visitors might see completely unrelated products on your own website. So for example, if you're selling beauty products, your partner products can show home improvement items, which is quite confusing and doesn't do anything to your sales. If someone is on your website shopping for beauty products, it's unlikely that they will buy DIY home improvement tools. Remember to check the settings of the partner products and of your affiliate program so it doesn't deter visitors from your own website. Number 10, pop-ups. This is something that's been my personal pee for a number of years. Large pop-ups that appear on a website as you're trying to read the content. It is especially distracting on mobile when the large pop-up covers the screen completely. It is super annoying. Luckily, Google now is dealing with it and considers large pop-up as a bad user experience. User experience is very important for SEO. The website with multiple pop-ups can actually rank lower in Google search results. Google can actually penalize you for having large pop-ups on the mobile that prevent your visitors to browse your content, especially pop-ups that have got a close button very, very difficult to find and have the most negative effect. Remember to reduce the number of pop-ups, especially the ones that appear at the same time. If you want to show more than one pop-up, Remember to adjust the settings so they don't appear at the same time. One can appear at the beginning of the session and the other one can appear at the end, triggered by someone leaving the website. It's called exit intent and it is very, very effective. So remember, reduce the number of pop-ups and show only one at a time and also minimize them on mobile. You can change the display settings of each pop-up so it displays differently on bigger screen and differently on mobile. It will be much better for your SEO, for user experience, and for your sales. Number 11. Distractions on the product page. Anything that distracts your visitor from buying, so any social media icons, star rating, reviews, distract your visitor from one action they should be taking, buying from you. Remember to remove anything from the product page that distract your visitor and take attention away from buying. The product page should be stripped down out of the bare essentials, especially above the fold, the area visible without scrolling down. The above default on your product page should contain only the key elements, product title, price, variant, quantity, and add to cart button. These are the most important elements for any visitor to buy from you. Anything else is a distraction and should be either removed or displayed below the fold. Also, if your add to cart is below product description, that can also affect sales. Make sure to move it at the top so it's displayed above the fold. Remember, above the fold area is the key for conversion on any page, especially on product page. I've got another video analyzing how to optimize your above default area to convert better, so make sure to check it out. And remember, if you like what you hear, 
click the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also remember to hit the bell to get notified every time I put a new video up. Also let me know which of these 11 points you like the most and which of them would you like to learn more about and I'll create a video on the topic. Leave a comment below to tell me on what topic should I create my next video. Please do me a great favor, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for the algorithm and hit the bell to get notified every time I add new video. There is new video coming every week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Also check the other videos shown here and see even more clips on my YouTube channel. Speak with you soon, bye bye!